Hello and welcome to Rhino's Ravens Review. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Great win against the Washington Commanders for the Baltimore Ravens. Though the game didn't start off that well. Mark Jackson throwing an interception on the first drive. Luckily it wasn't the first play. Got a few plays off before he threw the interception. Threw it a little wide to the left side to Mark Andrews. Maybe trying to push himself a little more to get Andrews more involved in the passing game. Just threw it a little wide. Andrews tipped it right into the defender too. So, uh, somewhat annoying. But, able to right himself. Because, very high completion percentage for this game. You can see them on BaltimoreRavens.com. Let's go to the Game Center page, and I will show you. As you can see here, Lamar Jackson, 20 of 26 in passing attempts. That's a high percentage. It's over 70%, even with throwing a pick. Didn't throw too many touchdown passes, but you know what? Derrick Henry ran for two, so, you know, throwing for 300 is it's good enough. What else I got written down here? Another busted up snap. Must have been my fault. I'm talking too good about this snap. The quarterback center exchange. This time it was Linderbaum. Best I can say is it looks like he's trying to come out of his stance before he snaps the ball. He's trying to stand up and get in blocking mode. Pass per, I think it was a pass play. And not staying down long enough to get the ball out. Kind of doinks off his foot. Instead of, you know, coming out clean to Lamar in his shotgun. Several straight games. Two straight, what? Two straight games with the bobbled snaps in them. It's not, that's not good. We need to, need to fix that. I wrote down here that they didn't finish that strong defense, uh, offensively. Sorry. Now, that is somewhat mis misleading, I guess. Commander scored 10, the Ravens scored 3. Now, the Ravens did hold the ball for almost 9 minutes in that fourth quarter. Only able to manage one field goal. Again, that last drive, where the Ravens ended it in victory formation... They were in field goal range. So, it's just weird to see, you know. One team scores 10, the other scores 3 in the fourth quarter. It did kind of feel like they were taking their foot off the gas. And I think to a certain extent it's really me not wanting to get in that mode again. But at the same time, they're doing a lot of run plays. They're moving the ball matriculously down the field. And, and they were getting positive yards. It's not like they're trying to run the ball and get stuffed at the line every time. They were getting first downs. That's why they were able to end it in the victory formation, because they were getting first downs. So, it's really they ended, they didn't end that well from a scoring perspective. For an offense, holding on to the football, gaining first downs, it was fine. It's just would have liked them to score a little more in the fourth quarter. Maybe instead of getting a field goal on your first possession in the fourth quarter, get a touchdown. But that can't always happen. Let's talk about some of these stats here. Another big game running for Derrick Henry. 24 attempts. This is a little high. We would like that to be down a little more. Mostly because you want him re ready for the, you know, the end of the season. But again, to a certain extent, you know, you got your, your last possession started, what, about maybe five minutes-ish left? Uh, maybe four minutes-ish left in the fourth quarter. And you wanted to get these, four, these first downs. 
you didn't want to give the Washington Commanders the ball back. So you had Derrick Henry in there, plowing through people. So there's that. Justice Hill didn't get many carries, which could take some of the load off of Derrick Henry. Only one carry for Justice Hill. Somewhat odd. But again, you wanted those first downs at the end of the game. Now, you're also playing this whole game with a very high-powered Washington Commanders offense on the other side of the ball. They're what? The second highest scoring offense in the league, at least prior to this game. I don't know what the numbers are now. But still, I would have liked to have seen Justice Hill involved a little more. Somewhat odd that he wasn't. Jackson ran the ball for, with I'm sorry, ran the ball 11 times for 40 yards. Which is a little low in the yard category, but... Because that's 11 times he's taken hits. And he's only getting 40 yards. That's not great. He had a long of 33. Some of that is him dancing around in the back and getting... He did get hit at least... He got sacked a few times. So not great there. Passing game. Look at Zay Flowers. Another game over 100 yards. No touchdowns, nine catches, 134, 132 yards. Bateman had 70 yards. Andrews, 66. And some of the uh, the regulars back in action here. Justice Hill, Isaiah Likely, they're more, you know, like, you know. You almost have too many mouths to feed with the football. You really do for a certain extent. Let's go to the NFL.com's page. See some of the target numbers. Hey, Flowers targeted nine times. He got those nine catches on nine targets. That's very good. But again, if you're Lamar Jackson and you're 20 for 26, you're not going to have too many targets where there's no catch. Bateman, four for four. It's good. That's your two top wide receivers. And you're perfect in the completions per attempt. That's that's really good. One of the knocks on Lamar was he couldn't throw the ball outside to a wide receiver. Well, 200 yards and 13 completions on 13 targets. Pretty good game passing. Mark Andrews actually got four targets. Three catches, one being the one that, you know, ended up being the interception. 66 yards and a touchdown. A little seam route into the end zone. You got to hold the safety on the right side. Put it right over the top of the man covering Andrews. It was a nice pitch and catch there. Likely not as good a game by likely. Hmm. He still run a little bit. He does... Get a lot of these good yak yards. That's why his yards are up a little more. But 50% completion rating to likely. Hmm. Might have been guarding him a little more since it did seem like Lamar was favoring likely over Andrews. Well, big mistake by a defense. Go ahead. Favor one of the tight ends over the other one. That's why you got two good ones. But again... You don't really want too many more pass catchers than what you got right now because, again, too many mouths to feed. But at the same time, you do need depth. What else I got written down for the offense? Lamar and his dropbacks happened again where he drops back way too far and just creates a very tough angle for the tackles to be able to pass block for him. Didn't seem like up until now, that anybody else was really calling him out on it. Finally, Tony Romo said something on the bar broadcast. It's about time. Dropping back 9-11 yards. Tackles are taught to block. Yes, the pocket is supposed to go all the way back. But 
it, they cut it off. It's a pocket, not a lane. A lane would be all the way up and down the field. A pocket has a bottom to it. But it's almost like Lamar doesn't know that. Well, he needs to learn real quick. Andrews finally gets some better targets. He was getting targeted before, but they weren't as good at targets. I guess instead of doubling up Andrews, people were kind of putting more people on likely. Worked out good for Andrews. And I mentioned Hill only with one carry. It is a little concerning. It is a little concerning. I think you could have found at least three other times in there to give Justice Hill the ball. Just so it's not Henry doing it all the time. We do need him fresher. Again, because he needed Henry late in the season. Alright, I covered that. It does sound like I'm criticizing the offense a lot. But, at the same time, am I really? I'm more nitpicking a little bit because I want them to be even better than they are. So they can, let's say, you know, have a better finish to this season as opposed to last season. They are clicking very well. The offense is clicking very well. Do they have some hiccups? Like a few muff snaps. Ball starts not lining up properly as an offensive lineman. Throwing the ball a little too wide. Yeah. But spreading the ball around. Completing a high percentage of your passes. Being able to have long sustained drives. How many times did they do that in Cincinnati? 90 something yard drives. Had several long drives in this game. Let's see. What's the longest? <clears throat> Excuse me. Here you go. Here, starting on the Baltimore seven yard line. It says you only got 82 yards. You get some penalty yards in there. But there, you started on, on your own seven yard line and you got a touchdown out of that. That's good. It's 22. You starting on a 22 there. Eh, that's kind of a long drive. Here, start on Baltimore's six yard line. There was a 22 there. But being able to do that is a good thing. You will chew up clock. You will keep that other offense off the field and keep the defense on the field. Your opponent's defense, you want them on the field more than your own defense. You want that. That's how you win games. Speaking of defense, moving right over, right along here, show you some of the numbers. No turnovers for the defense. Disappointing. You didn't win the turnover battle. You gave one up, and you almost gave up a fumble. Luckily, they were able to pounce on that one. Got a few pass breakups. But it was it was a tough task for this defense. Again, the Washington Commanders offense, led by Jaden Daniels, very nice up-and-coming quarterback. I'm not going to compare him to Lamar Jackson. He looks a whole lot different than Lamar Jackson-ish. I guess maybe the same archetype. He just does it a little differently. Definitely is much better in the passing game. Those comeback routes, which are purely timing things, you can't wait for a receiver to turn around and start coming back. You have to throw the ball before the receiver gets to the top of his route. And they do that very well. Torching Baltimore corners on those comeback routes. Way too many yards on those comebackers. To a certain extent, you can't exactly change up your coverage because then you're off the ball too much or you're or, or you're off coverage too much or you're pressed too much and that can set up other things. What you really need to do is get a linebacker or something dropping back in those lanes. Or, you know what, get to the quarterback sooner. But... Again, timing and precision. Jaden Daniels, right? Yeah, Jaden Daniels does 
he's doing that very well. He's talking about the corners. Steven. Steven still doesn't turn his head around when he's playing pass coverage. He's in pass coverage. He, he would get penalized so much less if he would just turn around and find the football. He would. But he doesn't, so getting penalized for pass interference a lot. Because he won't turn his head around. <sighs> Torch on the comeback route. Yannick Ngakwe. Took him a few uh, few weeks to get up to speed in the Ravens defense. Not that that probably really wasn't it. I mean, he plays he plays defensive line. It's probably more getting into game shape. Now he's not out there all the time. He's not because Clowney last year. Clowney was out there a lot. Gawkway's not out there a lot. He is part of the rotation, getting in there here and there. But he did have a much heavier workload. He actually played last week in Cincinnati. I didn't mention it because it wasn't that much. Played a little more here. And made good on it. He got himself a sack. First sack for the second time with the Ravens. Sure, if that makes any sense. Because this is his second stint with the Ravens. Several other times he was able to get pressure on Daniels. Now Daniels is a runner, so to a certain extent it's going to be you're going to get less sacks because he's just going to run away from dudes. But got a few other sacks here, you know, Travis Jones, Manabike and Pierce combining on one. We're able to get to Jaden Daniels. It is Jaden Daniels, right? Yes, Jaden Daniels. Okay, make sure. I'm saying the guy's name wrong the whole time. <laughs> Sounds like me, though. <clears throat> but I, I always want them to have more pressure on the quarterback. It is going to make your corners play a little better. Of course, at the same time, when a quarterback does feel the pressure and he just lofts one up to a wide receiver, if Brandon Stevens never turns his head around, or who was that that got that penalty? What drive was that on? Was it this one? Um, No, it was on that field goal in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, yeah, here the twenty-three yard penalty. No, oh, I'm sorry, it was on Wiggins. Wiggins not turning his head around either, just grabbing the wide receiver, picking up too many bad habits from Brandon Stevens, I guess, right? Get your head around. Play the football. You know what? If he had, because there was so much loft under that ball, he would have tipped it, and you wouldn't have given up the field goal. Because, well, I did. Of course, I, I I went away from it. What was it? Yeah. It, when it was third and 20. Third and 20, you got pressure on Jaden Daniels, and he just lost it up there. He was giving you the perfect opportunity to get an interception. And it would have been your first career interception, except you didn't get your head turned around. You just grabbed your wide receiver. Disappointing. Disappointing. I mean, it's, it's good because they didn't give up too much. I mean, look, it, it, it's 2024 in the National Football League. If a quarterback isn't throwing for a bunch of yards to his wide receivers, probably doing something wrong. That's what the NFL wants. You're going to give up some yards. What you don't want to do is give up too many yards and too many scores. Something these cornerbacks need to work on. But at the same time, you're able to win. Commanders were... 
Uh, they were yeah, they were four and one. They had more wins than the Ravens did when it came coming in here. They got a good team going. Definitely turning this franchise around. High powered offense is going to do that. The lack is a defense because you had no answers for the Ravens offense in the fourth quarter. You didn't. Your only answer was to do it all on offense yourself, which isn't going to work all the time. But however, let's wrap this up and get out of here. Good win for the Baltimore Ravens, defeating a tough opponent. Not necessarily a division rival, but a region rival. Up next week, Monday night game. Ooh, yay. Against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. To Tampa again. I feel like the last time they played Tampa, Tom Brady was the quarterback and they went to Tampa. Hmm, interesting. Tampa Bay going to come here? No, that's okay. Anyway, anyway, anywho, that's going to do it for this edition of Rhinos Ravens Review. Please stay tuned for Rhinos Ravens Preview. You know what? Yeah, let's do it Sunday. Maybe. Well, shoot, I hadn't thought about, I hadn't thought that far ahead. I would kind of like to get into a mode here. I don't know. This weekend, we'll say. Maybe Saturday or Sunday. Haven't decided yet. Sorry. For the next... <laughs> yeah, screwed that up, didn't I? Well, I totally forgot it was a Monday night game. Sorry. Stay tuned for this weekend for the next edition of Rhinos Ravens Preview. And I'll preview the game between the Baltimore Ravens and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I am the Angry Rhino. Fly Ravens, fly.